Oh, hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and this vision of loveliness is Nisha Solis Ivan Berry, my wife, my business partner, my best friend, and also a registered nurse and certified breastfeeding consultant and health coach. All the things. There's All the things. So many letters behind my name. Yes. Like alphabet soup. Yes. <laughs> More initials, the better, I say. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you could join us uh, for the next hour or so. We're going to be answering questions about a proper human diet, as well as interjecting our opinions about various things that are in the mainstream media as they come to mind. And uh, this video is sponsored tonight. I'll tell you later who's sponsoring it. And uh, yeah, so uh, sit back, relax, and ask your question in the comments, and we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, first, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to our PhD coaches and mentors. You will find them in the comment section. Their names are blue, and they have a little blue wrench beside their names, and they will answer some of your questions as well. So if you see them commenting back, interacting with you guys, those are our PhD coaches. They are inside of our PhD community, but they're also here inside of the comment section during our live stream. So if they answer you, yep. pay attention. They'll answer beginner questions very often. And so if someone answers you with the blue wrench, you can take it that to the bank because they've been with us for years and they know what I would say. Uh, also, the wrench could be used as an instrument of assault and battery. And so if you're being rude in the comments, they will ban you. They will. So be nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take questions from everyone. Vegans are welcome to ask questions. Uh, everyone. We want the health of everyone on this planet to improve. And so we we, we don't call questions, but mm -hmm. you got to be nice. I was just going to say. <laughs> um, make sure you keep it kosher in the comment section. That will also get banned. So, you know, don't yeah. be. But not literally kosher, but you know what she means. <laughs> Don't be weird. Yeah, don't be weird. Be nice. Be respectful right. and uh, ask good questions. And you guys are welcome to chat in the in the comment section. Uh, I want you to tell me, first of all, have you shared this video already? Because there are people out there very, very sick with type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, hypertension, obesity. They need this information. So please click the share button and then tell me in the comments where you shared it. What, what social media, email, text. You can share it all the different ways, but that helps us reach new people and help them who otherwise would have no idea that there is such a thing as a proper human diet. It is April 1st, but there are no April Fool's jokes in this in this live stream, right, yeah. Dr. Berry? Well, you cannot I, be you not be tricking people no, today. No, uh, this will be only factual yeah. and well intentioned. Now on Twitter this morning, I did post an April Fool's tweet. If you haven't seen that yet, if you're on Twitter X then you can check that out. So I did have a little fun early this morning with my first cup of coffee, but no, this is all for reals. For real, for real. For real life. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Where in the world is everybody watching from? I see. We have someone uh, from Europe. Yeah, says, I saw there's somebody no from Europe. April Fools here. That's just the <laughs> second now, so stop it. Yeah, here's here's Kentucky. Hey, Where are you watching neighbor? from? Tell me in the comments. What city, what state, what country? Hey, Betsy. Uh, B. Rose has already shared it and gave it a thumbs up. Have you done likewise? That helps us to reach new people. And it's free. Doesn't cost you anything. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Good to see you again. Hey, All right, let's answer some questions. Uh, Denise, Denise, yeah, any suggestions for motivation to stay on the carnivore diet? Mm -hmm. So I'll go first. And then, uh, so I'm going to give you the slap. And then Nisha's going <laughs> to give you the hug. It's the slap hug. That's what we do. So, what I want you to focus on, Denise, is that, first of all, we know without a doubt that human beings have eaten lots of meat for our entire existence on this planet. This is not a fad diet. This is not a new diet. It's actually the oldest diet that humans have eaten is as much meat as they could get their hands on and eggs every time they could find them. This is the proper human diet. Number one. Number two, this is not just for weight loss. If you're doing this for weight loss, that's great. You will lose unneeded, unhealthy fat. I want you to be doing this for your overall health, okay? This is going to lower your blood sugar, lower your insulin. It's going to lower your blood pressure. It's going to make you healthier in hundreds of ways, okay? 
and it's going to lower your levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation. So there's the objective slap. Now for the subjective hug. Oh, my mom is calling me and she never calls me at this time when she has you, the kids. Right, I'll yeah, be right back. The kids. Hang on. So I'm going to now step in the part of Nisha. So it's going to make your skin better. Okay. Uh, I can't tell you the hundreds, if not thousands of people who have reached out and said, my adult acne is so much better on carnivore. Uh, it's going to make your skin softer. You replace every skin cell that you have every, every six to 12 weeks. You have completely new skin. And so if you're building your skin out of a proper human diet, it's going to be better looking, better acting skin that's going to be tighter and firmer. It's also not going to sunburn nearly as easily. Again, this is a comment I've seen thousands of times on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, is that, man, I went carnivore and used to, I could only stay in the sun 10 minutes. And now I can stay 45 minutes. We hear this all the time. Now, everything okay? Yeah, just a, just a little country girl drama. Oh, oh, gotcha. Um, what did you say? I, all the all the objectives. Now things. help Denise with the heart talk. So what I what I promote inside of our group when we're working on a challenge and we're using carnivore is to focus on your why, which Dr. Gray listed several whys, but I make sure people have a reason they're doing a carnivore diet instead of like I just want to try this which can be fine. But yeah, it's a need, fad, so try it. It's yeah. fine, yeah. Uh, but having a real motivation behind it, like I promote carnivore as an elimination diet, which is the best elimination diet because you're eliminating pretty much everything except for meat, right? Sometimes you leave in dairy, sometimes you take it out. And knowing what the purpose of you doing this and the end result that you're going for and writing down a list of reasons, um, taking documented steps, of your symptoms, where they are, where you would like them to be at the end of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, those type of things. And that really helps people stay on track because they have a really good reason to stay on carnivore for whatever they want to set it up as. A lot of people start carnivore and think it's going to be a lifestyle and it might, but you don't necessarily have to make that jump in the first go. You can, you can do it for 30 days as a trial and see how you feel and things like that. Carnivore yep. is that's a, Huge elimination diet. It is. It is. And some people have severe sugar withdrawals mm -hmm. if they go cold turkey to carnivore. Yeah. Other people don't really have that much. Amen. First of all, huzzah, congratulations. You lost 60 pounds on a proper human diet. Uh, it's time to cut out the cheese, most likely. Amen. That's probably what's going on. Barbara says, your opinion on coffee while on carnivore, I think it's perfectly fine. Humans have been drinking some form of coffee or tea for about 8,000 years. Uh, that's not long enough to make a uh, proper human diet. It, it's not ancestrally appropriate. I'm, I'm the first one to admit that, but it's been in our system long enough and we've had enough uh, millennia to research this. If it did anything really, truly bad to you, we would know about it by now. Well, this again comes back to N equals one, which means like take it out for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days and see how you feel. Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Did you see benefits? Did you see no change really whatsoever and some yep. people really need to cut co coffee out and some people it's fine for that's exactly right ryan officially joined the phd community Ooh. today welcome you found your tribe i heard mixed things about uh, the glucose ketone index are you an advocate of gki i hover between 0.8 and 1.8 on carnivore do you find it useful helpful or unnecessary i find it it's fine if you want to do that i don't think it's in any way necessary if any of you guys watch and say i don't know what the gki is good it's fine don't worry about it okay you <laughs> if don't, you're a data junkie it's literally not going to help you at all if your a1c is normal and your fasting insulin is normal or those numbers are moving towards normal and your triglycerides and hdl are normal or moving towards normal and your hs crp is normal or moving towards normal then you're doing everything exactly right ryan that's all you all you need to know um hey let's get fully laden swallow i hadn't seen you in a while where you been man he says hey nurse nisha and dr Barry, thanks again by the way for the super chat it's very generous i have a friend that is facing knee replacement x-rays show bone on bone mm -hmm. Going to share videos on carnivore and joint pain with her. Any other thoughts, please? Thank you. As no, always. so she needs to keep walking, keep moving, even though I know it hurts. And she needs to eat as low carb, as uninflammatory as possible. If she's fine with meat and eggs, that's what she needs to do. And she needs to cut out all the dairy except for butter or ghee. Uh, and if she would like to keep her knee. 
I can't tell you the number of people who had bone on bone on the x-ray. I was just talking to a guy at church. I didn't tell you about that, but he's like, my hip's bone on bone. I'm like, yeah, I know. I understand that, but go carnival for 90 days before you have the surgery. He's like, no, it's shot. It's I'm like, no, it's not shot. Just shut the hell up and, and do carnival for 90 days before you have the surgery. I could tell I didn't convince him because he likes his carbs. He was eating a donut. In fact, when I was talking to that him. comes down to like, what are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up surgery? Are you willing to give up donuts and being very yeah, realistic yeah. with yourself? Like yeah. if you just want to get the surgery and you're not willing to give up the donuts, then yeah. be honest with yourself. Knee replacement and hip replacement. People think, oh, it's this delicate surgery. No, there are little it's hammers little... and power saws. It is carpentry. Okay, is nothing elegant or sexy now, about carpentry it. is being a bit more elegant than it actually is. Yes, it's, it's, it's barbaric. Barbaric. It's barbaric. It's yeah. awful. You don't want to do that to your body if you can help it. So I would highly advise you to go 90 days carnivore, meat, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, leave out the dairy. Okay, because for some people, dairy inflames the joints. Mm -hmm. And even though at the end of that 90 days, you when you x-ray it, it'll still be bone on bone, you'll have 90% less pain, maybe no pain at all, and you'll be able to do all your stuff without pain. We have a lot of people in the comment section. If you have had the experience of what we're talking about, the joint pain, arthritis, and you've seen improvement by even going meat bags, not even carnivore, put it in the comment yes. section so people can Please. see that because it's important Please. to Please. see those anecdotal. Now, here's a good evidence. question. And so this is a, a good question, but it, it's evidence that sometimes we just don't think through things. So NAV says how to get sunlight red light on cloudy days. So here in Tennessee, when it's cloudy, like right now, it's completely pitch black dark outside. No, oh, no, it's not, is it? There's still light. Even there's more light outside on a cloudy day than there is with all your lights on inside the house, like 10 times more light. That's coming from the sun. It penetrates the clouds, okay? Even on a cloudy day, it's not dark outside, right? So you're still getting the full spectrum of sunlight even on a cloudy day. In fact, when back when I was eating a, a diet high in carbs and seed oils, I got one of the worst sunburns of my life on a very cloudy day. That's back when I could stay in the sun 10 minutes. That was before I met you. Oh, I had blisters. It was not, it was no bueno. It was very, very bad. And the sun didn't shine all day. It was cloudy. So I just had my shirt off. I was like 20. I was running around working. Oh, I thought I was going to die. Yeah, you still get sunlight on a cloudy day. Hey, let's get Dia a shout out over here. She says, my bone on bone and grinding marbles in my knees stopped completely two weeks into triple B and E. Thank you. I'm 30 days in, 17 pounds down, and my RA inflammation is 80% gone too. I'm in. Uh, Smelly's been eating three to four cans of sardines every day and two drops of iodine in the morning coffee. Is that too much iodine? No, that's totally fine. Uh, Dan, thank you guys for my dad. Thanks to you guys. My dad's lost over, lost over 40 pounds due to carnivore over the last few months, and he's a new man for it. Can I get a huzzah for Stuart? Huzzah, yeah. Stuart! Kick ass after, I don't know how old you are, but keep kicking ass. I love it. Freaking love it. Thank you, just me, very much. Uh, DNP, 61-year-old female, or rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoidosis, keto for 18 months. Insulin 4.8, Trigs 88, HDL 95, total cholesterol 377, LDL 269. Concern creatinine is 1.05, BUN 33. The BUN is not a concern. The creatinine may be uh, calcium 10 for 10. Your calcium is 10, so you need to, to have your parathyroid glands checked and keep following your kidney function. What was your creatinine before you started keto? You need to know that as well. All right, let's say what's up with Ebony. Ebony, H1, uh, hemoglobin A1C is 5.9, but been eating red fatty meat and virtual zero carbs, peppers, garlic, salt since January 1st. Same for my wife, 5.7, uh, assuming it will improve over time. Rechecking in three months, Ebony. And if it's still high, these are just barely high, but they are still high. Then I want you to check something called a glycated albumin because sometimes on a carnivore diet, you build such good quality red blood cells that they live for 10 to 20 days longer than the average red blood cell lives. And that allows more time for glycation and can give you a falsely high. Now, if you're able to see three months ago with six point something, then you're improving. It's going to take time to get it down. So in three months, if it's not, down, not any lower than this on carnivore, then get a glycated 
albumin. He also shape. asked, or they also asked, um, fasting oh. is it dangerous for the no, uh, no, I've got it. I've got a YouTube video on my YouTube channel about the this fasting bullshit. That's what it is. It's just complete and utter ignorance. Uh, evidently, fasting is cutting into big foods profits, and you know, big food gives millions of dollars a year to the American Heart Association and to the American Diabetes Association. And so I think that's why you see the ADA and the AHA all of a sudden saying, oh, fasting will kill you. Oh, low carb will kill you. Oh my God, uh, the sun, oh my God. Yeah, I, I think we're cutting into the big food profits and I don't think they like that. So they're trying to fight back a little bit. How many hours uh, to eat before bed is healthy, says Nav. Anywhere from two to three hours for most people, is that's ideal. John... Seven polyps at last colonoscopy, two years since last. Worse yet, started carnivore in that time frame. Should I be concerned? You should be concerned that you're going to have less polyps at your next colonoscopy. You should be concerned that your risk your risk of colon cancer will go down on a carnivore diet. Uh, you should be concerned that uh, you're not going to have any new diverticuli on carnivore. And also be concerned that you're going to have less trouble going number two which rhymes with poo in the bathroom. Two muscles. I just said. I, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, smelly fella, Dr. Barry, do you have an opinion on the 72 hour sardine fast versus the 72 hour water fast, which is better? So, a 72 hour uh, period of time in which you eat sardines is not a fast. Okay, it, it's become kind of popular to say this kind of thing. Butter fast, sardine fast, you know, uh, I don't know. It should uh, just be called the sardine diet. Yeah, you're just you're eating strict eating sardines. Eating sardines for, yeah. you know, 72 It's hours. not a fast. You're elevating your insulin. You're elevating, uh, yeah, it's, but it's, uh, I think sardines are a super. It's food. an elimination diet for it's 72 a, it's hours. A, it's That's a what a super restrictive elimination diet is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not. It's, it's not fine. Really a fast. But now, the 72 hour water fast, we know what that's going to do to all of your levels. It's going to move them in the right direction. And a 72 hour sardine uh, elimination diet. I think that's great. Do it and see what benefits you get and then report back, especially People if you're in the group. Really think it does a lot for them as a reset or a reboot. I just Maybe. have a problem with things being called a yeah. fast yeah. when they're not actually fast. not a fast. Hey, Holly Crazy, my old friend. Now, feel hungry shortly after a proper size carnivore meal. Any tips? Oh, let's stop right there. What do you consider a proper sized meal and why the hell do you consider that there is no such thing as a proper sized meal each individual human needs a different amount of food and there's this built-in thing that tells us if we need that food especially if you're eating carnivore it's your hunger eat until you're comfortably stuffed there is there is no palm size four ounces six eight and there's no none of the, all those numbers are meaningless to your body Eat until you can't comfortably eat another bite of meat. That's when you stop eating, just like we did for millions of years. Uh, now, let's talk about the second part. Uh, I feel like it might be me not chewing properly before feeling full faster. So how many times should you chew your food? This is a trick question. There is no proper number of times to chew your food. This is also a bullshit myth. OK, now I recommend if you're eating vegetables, especially raw, you chew them up as small as you can. Otherwise, you'll be pooping out huge hunks of broccoli. That's two poops. Uh, but now meat, you need to chew it just enough time so that you can swallow it without getting choked or gagging. Literally, just like every other animal on the planet that eats meat. That's how many times you need to chew it, whether that's three or 63. Chew enough times so you can swallow it and go to the next bite. That's how you do that. I will say it seems like when people come from keto to carnivore, they get full faster because they're eating such nutrient dense mm -hmm. foods as mm -hmm. opposed to less nutrient dense mm -hmm. foods. And it may take some time <clears throat> for yep. your body to adjust to that. Yep. It doesn't mean anything bad. And you wind up just not eating uh, as much food as you did before. Right. Cause you got to keep in mind a big ass salad, which some people recommend on keto has no satiety value whatsoever. Okay. Um, broccoli, five pounds of broccoli, no satiety value. You'll be hungry again in 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you so much, Patty. Uh, let's see. Savon, Dr. Barry, my girlfriend has been diagnosed with a strain of limes, Bartonella, and baby Issa. All three? Dang it. That was an evil tick. She did IV antibiotics. Uh, both arms got infected, though. So we switched to a weekly shot instead. Her main symptom 
is horrible fatigue. And sometimes uh, with Lyme disease, you can have a, an extended period of a time for, of a month or two, sometimes longer, uh, of just fatigue, almost like um, when you have mono. If any of you guys had mono as a teenager, remember how you were just wiped out for a month or two or three after that? Like you, if you tried to do anything, you'd be like, oh my God, I got to lay down. You can have that same thing uh, with Lyme disease sometimes. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Uh, eat a proper human diet. Try to get out in the sun. Try to go for a walk. It will get better slowly but surely. Uh, you already got fully laden swallow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, fully laden. Um, how many coffees with cream throughout the day would break a fast? So a cup of coffee with a teaspoon of heavy cream. Okay, double cream, whipping cream, depending on where you're at in the world. That's probably not going to break your fast to any meaningful degree. Keep in mind that a cup of coffee's got one or two grams of carbs. A lot of people forget that. And so if you're having six cups of coffee with a teaspoon of heavy cream in each one in the morning, that's going to, yeah, that's going to break a fast. Okay. Uh, Madge Tick. Peter from Poland, 37, 39 years old. I've been uh, battling mental issues for over 10 years now, mainly an addiction to video games. Sign of the times. Carnivore helps me a lot. Stay strong, Dr. Barry, mainly for all of us. Thank you. Absolutely, I will. How many of you guys have noticed that some addiction is either less severe or you were able to break the addiction? Nicotine, alcohol, other drugs, uh, prescription drug addictions, video games, gambling. There's more and more research coming out that shows that being in ketosis makes it easier to break habits. Well, it doesn't make it easier. Let's say it makes it less hard because that actually is the, the proper way to say it. Yeah, if you have currently have an addiction you're trying to break, the more you're in ketosis, the less difficult it will be to break that addiction. Thank you very much. Carl, 85-year-old male on proper human diet for six months, resisted statins for decades, but finally succumbed after getting uh, a stent in 2015 on Crestor. Aspirin, 81 milligrams. Do I still need them due to the stent? Also on Carvedilol and Lodipine. The Crestor is probably not helping you at all. If you want to placate your spouse or your doctor, you can take five milligrams of generic Crestor just to shut them up. Uh, the, at 85 years of age, you, uh, you, this, you're taking the aspirin for secondary prevention. So it's a little more meaningful for you, but still at 85, the risk of having a, a GI bleed or having a brain bleed, if you fall and whack your head, talk to your doctor again and say, Hey, I'm 85. Are you sure I need to take a baby aspirin every single day? And then also uh, the lower carb you eat for the longer Carl, eventually you're going to be able to decrease or stop one of the blood pressure medications. Get a good blood pressure cuff and check your blood pressure the way I tell you to on my video about how to check your blood pressure properly, keeping in mind that most doctor's offices do not do it correctly. Patty, take two, forgot to include message in my last super chat. After four months carnivore, my A1C is down from 10.1. 8.6 without taking my metformin fasting insulin is 18.3 state of course 100% patty after and that's four months of carnivore you went down almost two complete percentage points after another three months I want you to check your A1C and fasting insulin every three months after three more months you're going to be down in the probably the low sevens patty okay we know you're not a type 1 diabetic we know you don't have LADA because you have your fasting insulin is 18.3 Keep doing what you're doing and recheck those labs every three months and uh, check in with your doctor so you can teach your doctor about a proper human diet as well. Easy does, easy does it. I've been taking Prilosec OTC since it came out. Should I try to stop it after I, I've tried before but wasn't good? Now, now I'm afraid. Yeah, 100%. So adopt and stick to a proper human diet for at least three months and then start taking the Prilosec every other day. And do that for two or three weeks. Then start taking it every third day. If you stop at cold turkey, you'll have severe re rebound, reflux. It's no fun, okay? But if you stop it slowly over a month or two, you won't have the rebound and you'll be fine without it. Twin Brook Acres. Greetings from Hill, New Hampshire. Thanks for all you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cynthia just found out I have Sjogren's Syndrome. Been on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs 30 days. No dairy, just butter. And still can't breathe through my nose. <clears throat> and still have joint pain, don't want steroids, what can I do? If your Sjogren's is really flared up, if it's still flared up, you may have to do a round of steroids, Cynthia. But talk to your doctor because very often 
you don't have to take the full strength dose of the steroid taper. You can start at a lower dose and, and wean down quicker and still get the benefits. Okay. But keep in mind, this would be worse if you weren't, if you were not on beef butter, bacon and eggs. Preston. Hey doc, I'm ready to start carnivore. Only thing that deters me is the potential reaction my body could have while in ketosis because of how my meds would respond to it. I see my nurse practitioner once a month. She's willing to lower meds. Yeah. So just slowly transition. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I'm so happy that you have a nurse practitioner that's yes. willing to work with you. Yes. That's optimum, right? We want you to be working with your personal provider as well doing these type of diets because not, not because they're dangerous, but because you're going to heal and yep. those medications are going to, your doses are going to need to be changed. And that's, that's right. something Lower. that only your yep. provider can do, right? Yep. So you need to be working with a good provider. And also I want you to teach your provider the benefits of a proper human diet. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I would transition slowly. Uh, over the next month or two, Preston, just slowly go keto, low carb, keto, ketovore, then carnivore while working with your healthcare provider. Absolutely. Thomas, what is the name of the test to tell me uh, the different types of LDL? I believe you said there's a good and bad. Yeah. So what you're talking about is the NMR lipo profile. That's what LabCorp calls it. Quest has another name for it, but it's basically just a full spectrum. It checks particle sizes and particle numbers. Those, those may matter or they may not. There's not really enough research uh, for enough years for us to say definitively if this is good or bad. We, a lot of people have theories and hypotheses, but none of that's been proven. But it's called an NMR lipo profile. Andrea. Andrea. I've been carnivore since February of 24. Lost 24 pounds eating ribeye, eggs, bacon, salt, water with electrolytes, butter, cod, and black coffee. Nice. Huzzah. Out of the blue, my left leg and knee are sore. Have you been more active? If you have, you're probably sore from that. Uh, You've been doing it a month. Very often, people feel so much better after a few weeks of, of carnivore that they're, they become more active and they'll have sore muscles. If not, go see your doctor. Mm -hmm. John, how can we get some time with you, doctor? Well, John, what kind of time are you wanting with Dr. Barry? You know? So if you need more of what we offer, you can become a member of our private community. It's phdhealth.community. That's it's the not, website. It's not one-on-one -on -one time. It's not a right. doctor-patient relationship. It's just more of this in a smaller community. So instead of how many people we have, 5,000 almost people watching tonight, you would have more like 200 people watching. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. And you can get more detailed answers to questions. So uh, all you guys are welcome to join. There's a $5 a month level and then higher levels with more benefits. And so feel free to come and hang out with us. Let's see who's next. Thank you, Scott, very much. IT, greetings from Orlando. I've heard that grain-fed beef has been shown to cause fatty liver disease. How important to stick. Switched. Yeah, this is complete and utter bullshit, IT, okay? Grain-fed beef. First of all, the cheapest beef, grain-fed beef you buy at the supermarket, that cow grazed on grass for 80 to 85% of its life. Only for the last few weeks do they bring it into the feedlot and give it grain to fatten it up to marble the meat. Okay, so that cow is 85% grass fed. When you finish them with grass, grass finished, they are slightly better for you. But the grain fed is in no way bad for you. It is one of the most healthy foods you can eat on the planet. I'd rather you eat a thousand pounds of grain fed beef than one ounce of Doritos or anything made by Kellogg's or Kraft. Hines. I need a pen. Okay. Vicky, can keto improve ocular hypertension? I have not seen any research on this, Vicky. I'm not sure about this one. It depends on why you have ocular hypertension. There are several causes. Some will re definitely respond. Some may not. But you're still going to be improving your health in so many other ways, Vicky. So I would definitely give it a shot. It's not going to hurt you for sure. Ryan, my dad has type 2 diabetes currently. Stage four kidney failure, dialysis three days a week, also congestive heart failure. He's 65. Can he still benefit from a proper human diet? He's very stubborn. So first of all, if your dad wants to eat a proper human diet, then 100% he's going to reverse his type two diabetes. He's going to improve his kidney function and he's going to improve his heart function by eating a proper human diet. Now, with that being said, he's a 65 year old grown ass man. If he don't want to do it, you don't need to be aggravating him and, and, and 
bitching at him, trying to get him to do it if he doesn't want to do it. If you can talk him into it, maybe you could say, you know, there's this country doctor on YouTube. You ought to check him out. If he decides to do it, then absolutely he's going to benefit from this great. Probably he'll be able to do dialysis less after three months of a proper human diet. He may be able to go one day a week. Maybe not at all. We've seen both happen. Do you want to talk about the sponsor of this live stream? It's not what you think, so don't like yeah. be offended. By this it. video is sponsored by AG1 Athletic Greens Why do you and do that? It's Balance nice. of Nature. They're both worthless junk waste of your money. Stop sending them your money. Use your money to buy meat and eggs. AG1 sucks. It's worthless. Okay. Balance of Nature sucks. It's worthless. Stop right. wasting your money. So the actual thing I was thinking you were going to say was this live stream is sponsored by you. Yes. And the members of the PhD community, if you've been around for a long time, you know Dr. Barry has never done a sponsored video in the history of this channel. It's, it's never had a sponsored ad or product never placement. Will. And that is because we have supporters like those of you who send super chats, those of you who share this video, like it, and are members of our PhD community. You make it possible for Dr. Bird to make content that is not sponsored yeah. by any products like AG1. Yeah. Or really, anybody. I'm never going to sell out. I'm never going to do that. It's just not in my nature. Even though AG1 Athletic Greens has offered me and Nisha both thousands of dollars to do a sponsored video, I just chuckle and delete the email. I'm never. I don't want to do talk that. about them anymore. I feel like we're giving them. Yeah, I think air people. Time I think people know what's up. I know. If you so. want, if you want to be our sponsor, this is how you do it. You become a member of our private community, uh, and then you also gain access to a tribe of thousands of people all across the world eating a proper human diet who've been right where you're at right now and can help you get to your goals. So thank you to our sponsors, yes, our real sponsors, our real sponsors, real people. Thank you so much for your support Absolutely. and your love. Absolutely. Kelly, week three, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs down 20 pounds, but feeling tired, nausea, and blood glucose is 45. Should I be concerned? Probably not. Are you, uh, have you had all of your labs checked? If not, go see your doctor. 45 is a little on the low side. Uh, I just want to make sure that you're not an undiagnosed pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic and you're having rebound hypoglycemia. Of what medications are you taking? If so, if you're taking any prescription medication, go see your doctor because you, it's probably time to decrease the medication. Uh, if you're taking any over-the-counter medications, it's time to reassess every one of those and see if you still need those. But go see your doctor and huzzah for the 20-pound weight loss. All right. Let's see what else is going on here. Oh, before I forget. Oh, yes. We will be in San Antonio, Texas. Texas, Tejas, this coming week. So if you are in the San Antonio area, I'm going to put the link to the event in the comment section for you guys because it is free. Yeah, come uh, see us in San Antonio. Our friends at Keto Chow host events all over the country, and this week's is in San Antonio. We will be there. We will be Signing books. Well, I won't be signing books. <laughs> He'll be signing books, taking pussies, and just hanging out at, I can't remember, Alyssa maybe knows the name of the burger joint, but it's listed on the website. So if you're interested in live in that area, come see us and say hi. Absolutely. I think it's free. It usually is. Keto Show does a lot of things for free. It's really kind of them. Rebecca, after an ultrasound for upper right quadrant pain, I was diagnosed with fatty liver. Which lab should I ask for? You should ask for a complete metabolic panel. And in, that's going to have an AST and an ALT in it. Then also ask for a GGT. Also ask for an A1C and a fasting insulin. And a lipid panel so I can see your triglycerides and your HDL. And also an HSCRP. Okay. You may need an abdominal ultrasound or CT to see just how bad this is. Now, that's what, that, what, that's what labs you need. Now, what do you need to do to reverse it and get rid of it? Guess what, Rebecca? I've got five videos on my YouTube channel about exactly how to reverse fatty liver. And it works for everybody. If your fatty liver was caused by years and years of a high carb, high sugar, high fructose diet. If it's from alcohol, you need to quit drinking the alcohol. Sandy says, is it true that smaller petite five foot two in women get hungrier than other women on keto carnivore? Sounds <laughs> There's no physiological reason this would be true, Sandy. 
uh, petite women have smaller stomachs than larger women. So, I mean, no, this is probably not true for the, for the majority of people. There may be some little five foot two pistol running around out there who can eat as much meat as I can, but that's very, very rare. Stuart, thank you so much. Two years carnivore lost 50 kilos. No more smoking or drinking. That's 110 pounds. Or and doctors? no issues because, and no of, issues you. because of you. Huzzah, Stuart. I love it. Well done. Is this also you're from Australia? Dude, that's freaking awesome. Are you How teaching? Do you know that? Well, see the A. That's Australian dollars. Oh, okay. Well, I, like, I hope you're teaching your friends and family how to do this because there's no way they can see you having lost 110 pounds and not be intrigued. Have you considered starting an Instagram or a YouTube channel, Stuart? Because there are many, many, many guys out there just like you who, who've given up hope. They're like, that nothing going to work. This thing going to work. Tell your story, Stuart. It's powerful. I promise you, tell your story. Yeah. Okay, right here. Thomas, what? Oh, we already did Thomas. Uh, I yeah. already did that. I already Ryan. did that. Ryan. Ryan. My, no, we did Ryan. Oh, we did? Yep. Kelly. Uh, week three, yeah, we already did Kelly. What the heck? Sorry. I saw Stewart's in them. Okay. Okay. Uh, independently blind. Hey, Dr. Barry, I have Crohn's disease and just had a uh, stricture, which was dilated back open. My AST is 43. Everything else is in normal range. What could this mean? So you may still have uh, some fatty liver. Uh, you need to have this fully evaluated. Also, when you have a your colon stretch, that can actually raise your AST temporarily. So if they check that afterwards, that may be why. Uh, or you may have fatty liver or you may have another liver condition. See your doctor, follow up with them and get this evaluated. But you need to eat a proper human diet to keep you healthier in the future. All right, guys, now's the time. If you got a question, ask away. Rice and beans needs to change their handle. My triglycerides went from 158 to 60 in three months on a proper human diet. If you have high triglycerides, there, there is no pill that's going to lower your triglycerides as much as a proper human diet. There is no pill at the pharmacy that will do this. Only a proper human diet will do this. Or just fasting for three months. That'll do it too. But you probably don't want to do that. Oh, Tim's got a good question. Where's Tim? He says, is there any truth to processed deli meat being carcinogenic? No, I actually have a, a video on my YouTube channel about bacon and deli meat. This is all, all of this. Remember all the articles? It's been a few years now. Oh, bacon will give you colon cancer. Oh my God, deli meat will give you cancer of the butthole. None of that's true. It's all based on observational data, okay, that, that showed a very small hazard ratio that's literally background noise. There is no study on planet Earth that has ever proved that bacon causes cancer of any kind or that pastrami or salami or mortadella, or what's the other ones we love? All the processed meats. But you don't. But you don't. None of that causes cancer. None of that causes cancer. Now, if it's if it's full of sugar, that might increase your risk of cancer. But just ground up meat, it's still just meat with some salt added to cure it. Humans have been curing meat for at least five thousand years. This is not some new thing that big food thought up. We've been curing. How many years did your grandfather in the smoke? back here I in mean, the smokehouse a long time 100 years ago they were uh, he was curing her grandfather was curing meat no it's fine eat your bacon eat your processed meat deli meat is fine don't don't buy any deli meat that's fat free because that's just dumb okay they're probably going to add some sugar because it doesn't taste like anything with no fat in it fat's good for you no processed meat causes cancer it just doesn't this is this is foolishness Big Hill. Big Hill. Hello, Nurse Nisha and Dr. Barry. Blood sugar, blood pressure, and down about 12 pounds. You both are awesome. Thank you from Dar and Alb. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Great Garden. Watch. Patty. Total cholesterol, 271. Triglycerides, 75. HDL, 108. LDL, 151. VLDL, 12. Doc's response was to recommend a statin. Am I good? Yes, you're totally fine. Ask your doctor, Patty. How much of the, the cholesterol statin research was done in women? And see what your doctor says. Because the vast majority of it was done only in men. 
And most of it was done only in white men. So how does that apply to a woman? How does that apply to a person of color? Well, does it? Maybe, maybe not. Nobody knows for sure, including your doctor. You're a woman. There's no proof that you're going to benefit from taking a stand. Danielle, Dr. Barry, will this diet help someone with lipidemia or lymphedemia? Yes, yes. <clears throat> I have a, a video uh, interview I did with uh, Siobhan Huggins, who has lipidemia, and her lipidemia has improved so much she looks like a different person now. Okay. She is a rock star in the lipidema community. She's currently conducting lipidema research using a very, very low carb diet. Other doctors as well are researching this as well. We've had hundreds of women and one or two men with lipidema reach out and say, oh my God, this is the way. It's so much less severe. Now you're still going to have lipidema, but it's going to be so much improved. You're going to be very thankful. Do you have all her information linked in that video you did with yes, her? Yes, yes, yes. She's very active on Twitter, so if you'd like her ex. And for those of you like me, who I used to not know how to, I, I literally, when I saw the, the name Siobhan, I did not know that's how you pronounced it. So it's S-I-O-B-H-A-N. That's how you spell Siobhan. I'm not joking. It's Scottish? Yeah. Irish? Uh, yes. Scottish or yes, Irish? Yes, one of those. <laughs> uh, Will. Do, how does PhD help with stress response and the chemicals that come along with it? Thanks for what you do. So people with anxiety disorders, uh, inappropriate stress responses, and post-traumatic stress disorder all report anywhere from good improvement to amazing improvement on a proper human diet. Okay? all Because all the stress hormones, they're normal and natural. You need those. You want those. You just don't want too much. And a lot of it is coming from the chronic inappropriate inflammation caused by the junk in the other food that you're eating. It's not that a proper human diet contains therapeutic chemicals. That, that's not how it works. You're removing all of the slow poison from your diet. That's how it works. Bettina, hey, I know someone on 30 medications and has chronic constipation. I do not doubt that. I asked her why her doc allows this, and she said she trusts him. What do you say? Uh, this is called polypharmacy, Bettina. There, there may be 100 humans on planet Earth who truly need to be on 30 different medications. That's how rare it should be that somebody's on 30 different medications. Absolutely, some of the medications she's taking are causing her chronic constipation. Also, if she's eating a high fiber, highly processed diet, that can also cause worsening constipation. Uh, if she'd like to get off a bunch of meds and also get rid of her chronic constipation, she needs to do high fat carnivore, and it will it will fix so many things she won't know what to do. CJ, comfy stuffed feels like ex anoretic ex binge eater. Um, so comfortably stuffed is something that if you come, if you used to be anorexic or binge eater or have bulimia, it's going to take you a while to get back in touch with these things. CJ, your, your question is valid. I encourage you to, to look up a registered dietitian by the name of Michelle Hearn, H-U-R-N. That's right. She has a book. She used to be anorexic. OK, there are other people who are former anorexics who are now eat a carnivore diet that are either written books or written blog posts. If you'll just search carnivore diet and anorexia, you'll you'll find all these people. But the dietitian's name is Michelle Hearn, H-U-R-N. She's good friends of ours. You've interviewed her on the channel before. Too, have, so if you want to check yep, out that interview, yep, I have an interview with just her. Just type in Dr. Barry, Michelle Hearn, and it should bring that up in your on browser. YouTube. Yep. A hooey how, a hooey how. <clears throat> what are my numbers telling me? A1C 5.7. So you're, you're, you're a little bit pre-diabetic. You got to get that down one more tenth of a point. Ferritin 738. So ferritin being elevated could mean a thousand different things. It doesn't mean you have iron overload necessarily. Iron 154, I'd have to know which reference lab you use to know how meaningful that is. Sodium 145. Glucose 108, ALT. So you got you got fatty liver, you got hypertriglyceridemia, you got prediabetes, you got metabolic syndrome. On carnivore for five weeks. What blood test should I retake after 90 days? A1C, fasting insulin, uh, triglycerides, HDL, HSCRP. 
Those are the numbers that I need to see. And if you want to become a member of the private group, you can share your lab results in the group so everybody can discuss them. We've got 10 certified coaches inside of our private community. And you can ask them questions. They'll, they'll answer your questions. And then we do one, two, three, four additional live Q&As just depending like this, on your level. depending on your level, just like this inside of the private group. In fact, tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're going to be live just like this again in our private community. And so if you'd like to get access and ask your questions, that's how you do it. There's also a link in the show notes that you can click on. Uh, now, will carnivore help with hereditary hair loss? Probably not. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Rob, Dr. Barry, hi from Toronto. My wife and I are doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs since January 1. We are both down 20 pounds. Two weeks ago, she had a TIA. Uh, LDL 296, doctor recommending 10 milligrams Crestor because of stroke. So she didn't have a stroke. She had a transient ischemic attack, which is not a stroke. Okay. Now, some people call them mini strokes, and it, it may very well have been that, but she didn't have any deficit that's left over. So she did not have a stroke. Uh, if she wants to compromise with her doctor, five milligrams of Crestor, she could take Zedia. Zedia is much easier on your system, but high dose statins or, or Repatha or Praluent, she does not need to take. She's not going to benefit from those. Uh, probably what caused the TIA was her decades of crappy diet before she started beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. What is TYVM? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, for that B-O-N slap D-N. Oh, yes, yes. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for all your wisdom. Was 288, now 150. So what's 288 minus 150, y'all? Because that I call that a buttload of weight loss. A1C 5.0. How many of you guys don't currently have a normal A1C? Ask Carol how she did it. Oh, carnivore diet. She put it right there in the comment, didn't she? There you go. Ruth, is the weight loss products go low any good? So I've got this pulled up on my screen because I saw your question. So, Dr. Perry, this yeah. is what go low is. So go low, I don't even know what go low is. It's BS. Oh. It okay, so it does have berberine. So it. it's got natural berberine, which is probably will help. It's not going to help much weight loss, maybe a little. But that's not really. But it's got a bunch of main ingredients. It's got oh, it's got a proprietary blend. That means they're not going to tell you what's in it. Yeah. rhodiola, gardenia, banaba. This is foolishness to think that uh, some special blend of herbs and spices. Here's how you know something is no. worthless. It says things like supports healthy blood glucose. That means nothing. Literally. Those words mean that's a, nothing. That's a great <laughs> rule. Anytime you're thinking about buying a supplement or buying you know, an herb or an essential oil, anything and it says supports heart health. The interpretation of that is my product is bullshit. That's what that means. Supports fill in the blank. No, either it does something or it doesn't do something. They're saying it supports your blood sugar because they don't want to get in trouble with the FDA. There's nothing in this product. And then the rest gonna... of the, the claims controlling sugar helps controlling sugar cravings. Like that's you cannot measure that. Right. There's no way to say this How's controlled that measure? shirt, right? right. Uh, balancing and stabilizing the key hormones that affect weight. Go low. Reduces that stress and anxiety. Really? Really? Increases energy and Come on. stamina. Come on. This is, no, the, there's so much foolishness out there. But people, we tend to trust people, which is not a bad thing, unless you're on the internet. And then we tend to believe, we want to believe in a little bit of magic. My friends, listen to me carefully. All 5,800 of you, listen carefully. There ain't no magic. There is no magic herb or berry or root, even from the foothills of the Himalayas that's only been peed on by virgin goat nannies. No, there's no magic, okay? You either eat a proper human diet and your body gets healthier, or you eat shit and you slowly get sicker and, and suffer and die prematurely. That's just it. YOLO is a waste of your money. You don't need that. Thank you for that question. Oh, 
wonder how much it is. It doesn't really say. Find out how much the gold is. I really I want to know. So they add went... to cart. I can't find the add to cart button. We're gonna we're gonna let you know how much Golo is. Yeah, I want to know. I bet it's stupid. I bet it's <clears> more <throat> than the membership to the PhD community. Uh, hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. Uh, let's see. Mario. No, sorry. Well, how did that happen? Mario. Mario. Hey guys, any recommendations on how to increase my daily protein intake? Because I'm not hungry after my first meal, and I can't reach my 230 gram target. Usually, get only about 190. That's fine, Mario. It, you're eating 190 grams of protein a day, animal protein, you're getting more protein than 99% of other Mario's in your similar age, similar weight, similar situation. You're, you're winning. You don't have to hit that number exactly. Anytime you use one of the calculators online to calculate your protein macro or your fat macro or your carb macro, those are suggestions. There is nobody on planet Earth who knows exactly how many grams of protein Mario should eat a day. It is an unknowable number. Okay? No calculator can calculate it. If he went to the preeminent physiology research lab in on Earth, on Earth, any country, I don't care, Sweden, Oslo, wherever, Norway, they could not tell him for definitively you need this many grams of protein a day. It is an unknowable number. If you're getting this close, huzzah, you win. A uh, 30 day supply of Golo is $59.95. $60. 60 bucks. Plus shipping. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that is a complete and utter waste of money. You'll get much more for your five bucks a month in our private group. Yes. Wow. Wow. I mean, how can they even act like th that they're ethical doing that? Devil dog for life. Been on carnivore since January 1. Weight went from 330 pounds to 299. So that's 31 pounds of weight loss. My A1C was 7, and it's down to 5.8. So you're no longer type 2 diabetic devil dog for life. Should have seen the nurse's face. I bet. Off all meds except metformin, which is perfect. And when you get that A1C down to 5.6, you can take that metformin and throw it just as far as you can send it. Because you won't need that either. And you'll be off all your meds. And you will have reversed pretty bad type 2 diabetes down to a normal A1C with carnivore. Don't that make you happy? Yes. Just people, that's the just, best. just random, that's the whole point. That's random men and women, going. they see a YouTube video and they're like, huh, I'm going to try that. And lo and behold, look what happened to Devil Dog for life. That's why I ask you guys to share these videos. Devil Dog, I guarantee you, somebody shared a video. He's like, what's this carnivore crap? I'm going to watch that. And it's literally transformed his life. Please okay. share this video. Would you please pay it forward? Dennis, do we get to see the alternate Dr. Berry finger again? <laughs> Maybe if it comes up. Get it? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Dead jokes. Nick, one year lion diet this week down two. 106 pounds. Give us a lady huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> yeah, that, that made me gain half a pound. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> off of 14 medications. Nick is off 14 medications. They would see went from 10.2 to 4.3. Psoriatic arthritis in remission, now pain free and living life to the fullest. Nick, have you started a YouTube channel? Have you started an Instagram? Have you started a Twitter? Because you need to, because this story, I can just shut up and just say, all 6,008 of you guys, just read Nick's quote. Just read this. I'm just not going to sit here. Just read it. And then tell me, there's no power in a proper human diet. You need to buy Golo, and you need to buy all these supplements, and you need to, you need to eat according to the American Diabetes Association. Stupid recommendations. No, you need to do what Nick did and eat meat and eggs until you're comfortably stuffed, and then go outside and play. That's literally how difficult it is. Thank you, Nick, for sharing that with us. That's amazing. Huzzah. You Huzzah, probably brother. just inspired somebody. Uh, so many people. Probably more so than many. Person, yeah. now, all you guys, if you've got a story like Nick's, you don't have to put a super chat. Just share it in the comments. People read these comments. Good job, Nick. Oh, Nick. Maggie, 11 weeks beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, healing leaky gut, and autoimmune rashes is the goal. So much better already. You got an autoimmune condition? Do you love someone who has an autoimmune condition? Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Any hints or tips to help seal those tight junctions faster? Mar Maggie, this is the beauty of it. 
you literally don't have to do anything. Those tight junctions will seal themselves when you stop eating the slow poison that causes the inflammation and causes the tight junctions to loosen. They're going to fix themselves. They know what to do. But back when you were slowly poisoning them, they couldn't get their act together. All you've got to do is eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and let your body heal. That's literally all you got to do. You don't need any special supplements. Oh, I've got this line of, of supplements I sell. Oh, no, I don't. No, because you don't need that. I can make $10 million a year, but Maggie doesn't need my supplement. So I'm not going to sell them. No. Eat meat. Get healthy. Now, Kita? This is a great question. Does severe anxiety and depression have an influence on blood work? Absolutely, yes. It will cause your glucose to be higher than it would be otherwise. It'll cause your insulin to be higher than it would be otherwise. It'll cause your triglycerides to be higher than they would be otherwise. It could even elevate your... CRP, your marker of inflammation. Yes, absolutely. Your anxiety and depression can influence your blood work. And a good doctor would take it under consideration that you're in the midst of anxiety and depression when they interpret your lab work. But hint, hint, Alketa, many doctors don't take that into consideration. Oh, my goodness. You can just hit the, yeah. Will it actually go down? Yep. Kayla, I'm looking for you. There you go. Kayla, any tips to help with postpartum hair loss? I'm breastfeeding and almost five months postpartum. My hair loss is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous amount. So, Kayla, this, I know you don't, this is not what you want to hear, but this is unfortunately normal. There's a name for this. I can't remember what it is. It's, yeah, postpartum hair loss. Right, but there's like an actual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but she, so, in this case, hormone. she's going to give you the slap, and I'm going to give you the hug, Kayla. Wait yes. for my hug. It sucks. It's temporary as long as you continue to eat plenty of healthy protein and healthy fat. It will come back. It's just going to, it's going to, it's going to listen. I had it too. And like I said, it's hormones. So the best advice I can give you is have some patience and a lot of protein and fat yep. and, and just give it time. You're doing great and your hair will come back. I had a huge gap in my hair. It looked like she had shaved yeah. her hair. She had baby hair like this. With yeah. both babies. Both babies, yeah. So, so it usually happens around the five to six month area and then starts to regrow. So you're going to have yep. these weird little, little Devil horns, horns that come out. Or angel horns. And But if you're getting adequate protein and good healthy fat, that's, that's going to regulate your hormones yes. and, it's, and make sure you have essential proteins to rebuild yep. that hair. Yep. So that's the key. And don't stress out too much. Don't stress. Sucks. It's going to come back and it's going to be even more beautiful because you're going to adopt and stick to a proper human diet, Kayla. That's going to give your hair follicles everything they need to make luxurious, sexy hair. Flip that ponytail around here. This is not extensions, folks. <laughs> I think that's pretty clear today. It's not looking that great. <laughs> I've been outside in the winds with my hair around, but yeah, I know. It sucks. But yeah. Also, if you're losing weight, Kayla, you're going to have some yeah. hair loss. But this is absolutely because yeah, of yeah, your yeah, postpartum hormones going insane and the breastfeeding. Okay. But it will, it will resolve. I yep, promise. Yep. Yep. Okay. Here is Ruth. Do you have any recommendations for vertigo? Do you have any recommendation for vertigo? Uh, yes. So for, uh, first of all, go see your doctor because sometimes vertigo can be a symptom of something serious. 99 times out of a hundred, it's not, but you need to see the doctor just to make sure. Okay, after you've done that, then you're going to watch my YouTube video about tinnitus because everything I say in the tinnitus video here in the South, we call it tinnitus. tinnitus. <laughs> That's what she's laughing about. Tinnitus. I will always say it that way. Yeah, yeah. Happen. But it's it. But watch that video. Everything I say in that video applies to vertigo. Also, uh, there are some maneuvers that if it's just benign positional vertigo, you can learn how to do these maneuvers at home. Just go to your, whichever YouTube search engine you like and type in vertigo maneuvers to do at home. And you can, you can watch YouTube videos about how to do these maneuvers if it's just benign positional vertigo. But see your doctor first because it could be something else. One more. One more. Sib or Nate. Where can I find a white paper on carnivore? I have a friend who does not like videos, but likes white papers. Mm -hmm. Well, you can read Sean Baker's book about the carnivore diet. It has white paper. It's, it's printed on white paper. 
Also, Paul Saladino's carnivore book is a great carnivore book, even though he doesn't believe a lot of the stuff he wrote then. That it's a great carnivore book. Judy Cho has a great I would say Judy's. Yeah, Judy's probably the one yeah. I'd recommend most. Uh Judy Cho, C H O, and it's printed also printed on white paper. MD. Right. She's an MD. No. Is, it, is she not? Mm, I don't think so. But she's smarter than the average. MD. She's very smart. Her very book is great. Very I would, I would, she's the top one. That and I Sean. One of two. Oh, Sean. Hey, guys. Could fat loss spike up trigs uh, temporarily acutely? Yes, absolutely. Last week, I asked about high LDL trigs and tendon xanthomas, but I did lose 18 pounds of body fat in six months. All of the numbers, A1C, HSCRP, CFR, glucose came back great. Huzzah, Sean. Huzzah. Okay, guys. If you like this and you want to do it again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central, then you're going to go to PhD Health, all one word, dot community but as a website it looks that's funny a website. Dr. Barry did it's not a website it's a at ATT yeah PDF. it's it's a it's a super quick sign up and then you can join our live at 6 p.m. central tomorrow inside the private group because all the other 6000 folks won't get to see that only our private community members get to see that live and ask their questions. Now, just fair warning, if you join this week, next week we will be out of town. So yeah. you will also have access to our PhD coaches and mentors who are a wealth of information on our super so helpful. amazing so helpful. and awesome. You will love them too. Yeah, and our coaches come from a wide variety of health backgrounds. Some had severe obesity. Some were vegan. Some uh, had severe autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. So many different health conditions that they've completely reversed with a proper human diet. Uh, I consider being on a vegan diet a medical condition. And also, it's just nice to be in a space of people who are mm -hmm. on the same path as you, and you don't have to worry about people telling you, you know, you're going to have a heart attack because you're eating steak. Right. And or you're right. going to have butthole cancer because you ate some pastrami. Why? Watch. So if you want to join us, awesome. Now, next week, like mm -hmm. I said, we're going to be out of town. So there will be no Monday Night Live because we will be in San Antonio next hanging week. out with our family and spending time with our loved ones there. So we will see you the week after that. And if you want to come into the community, then we might see you tomorrow too. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it. Thank you so much.